in the building, Dipper Dipper TV. Yo, what's happening? This is Big Daddy Kane chilling with Tiffany Taylor, and right now you're checking out In the Building TV. We right now, right now, right at now. this very moment, we in the building. We're in the building TV, so keep it locked, y'all. You already know. You're watching In the Building TV. It's me, your girl Tiffany Taylor, and you know what you're watching? Another episode of In the Building TV. Today, I bring you art. It's going down. I'm in the city. You're going to see artists. You're going to see a contest. You're going to see a giveaway. It's all going down here today. I don't know why you're not in the building, but let me get you in there. Let's go. You got the dumbbell off and the dumbbell spot. Combined together to make 6,000 square feet of madness. Everyone's going to be in costume and have performances. Over 20 featured artists. You name it. Kiosks and whatnot. Give reason to love it. Uh, tonight we're going to feature 10 competing artists, each in a different category, ranging from graffiti to abstract to fine art to photography. Quite the mix, just like the punch over there. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you like, please, go for the letter over there. $3 for uh, beer, $5 for punch, help yourselves. Uh, this is DJ Teardrop, by the way, everybody. He's going to get really crazy in a moment. Um, a few things that we have going on today, some big opportunities. We're giving away uh, basically $5 raffle tickets. With this raffle, you get a lot of things. It's a specially event priced uh, discount entrance for Monster, they're usually $10. Tonight they're $5. With that ticket, you get a raffle to win one of four fabulous prizes tonight. One is this gigantic pumpkin that I grew overnight. I didn't grow overnight. <laughs> plenty of goodies here from Dramatics Hair Care Products. You got a few beers here, a few adults. You got tons of candy, things that are going to break your teeth. The dentist will love you. You name it. That's just one of the prizes. Throughout the evening, we're going to have all these lead artists sign this exclusive Shades of New poster. We're going to wrap that off to one lucky winner as well, so you have a little soul of all of us. Just don't do food on us, please. <laughs> <laughs> I already lost enough here. Uh, number three, we'll get, with that, you can win five free monster tickets. So you guys will get five guest passes, bring someone along, and one free entry artist for Monster value is $70. By the way, the artists competing, not only get title of top art tonight, they'll get free entry into Monster as well. So let's cheer them on, all right? Definitely. We're going to start to introduce everybody one by one. We're going to have them speak in the next half an hour, 30 minutes. I want you guys to kind of enjoy yourselves for now. People are still coming in. People are still running late, so I don't want to start with everybody here, but I don't want to keep you guys stranded either. A few things as well. Uh, where is Victor Nunez? Raise your hand. There he is. He's the founder of Revs and Thieves. He has his collection that's releasing tonight. If you guys would like to pick up a cool piece, I'm going to rock one right now, by the way. This is where I keep my, uh, my wallet and everything. <laughs> Please see this gentleman. We have as well Rachel. She's doing mini makeovers for you guys. If you want to throw your thumbs up, ladies, or whatever guys are on you know, the other side. Help yourselves out. Curators. Mike Morello and Jackie, give them a round of applause for all of You want a professional shot? Ralph is your guy. You can retrieve your picture at the Remonster Productions page after you release the full album. Get a nice crisp shot of yourselves. Put those Facebook profiles up nice and handy. You get 50,000 likes. I know you love them and shares and all that matters. What else we got going on? Am I missing We also anything? gotta thank Dramatics NYC for That's providing right. this lovely venue. Thank you, Dramatics. Welcome to the Owners and general managers on the way tonight, they're going to bring their crowd as well, they're going to rock it up. I want you guys to enjoy yourselves here. This is not only an art show, this is a celebration. If you feel like dancing, dance. If you want to talk, talk. I don't want to see those photos and text you, like, get up and live your, live your life. We work hard, we do so much, this is what it's about. We're here to celebrate, this is my thanks to you, to New York. So once again, thank you. Now, please, DJ, please, rip it up. Yes. Um, In the building, we have Ramon. Hey, Ramon, what's going on? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Tiffany? I'm doing great. Let us know about this amazing event you're having tonight. Well, this is uh, Shades of New, a prelude show to Monster, which is basically the biggest Halloween art show in New York City. It's going to be on October 17th in Dumbo, Brooklyn, at the Dumbo Spot and the Dumbo Loft. Two venue spaces combining 6,000 square feet, 20 featured artists, plenty of kiosks, raffle giveaways, you name it. It's going to be madness. Costumes it's going to be crazy. 
more than crazy. Madness. And we're definitely in the building for that, right? That's right. Always in the building. So tell us, how did you come up with this idea to get art together, to get artists together, make it a big, great event? Well, it's actually an inspiration I had, myself being in galleries. Although they were awesome, it wasn't quite up to par from what I wanted to experience. So uh, me and my crew at Ramon Tree Productions, uh, we basically strive on raising the caliber of an art gallery for New York City and for striving artists that are up and coming. Give them real life opportunities, uh, build relationships with them in terms of the artists and the curators, and help them get their names and their beautiful artwork out to everyone to see. Okay, so how long have you been doing this? It's been about three years now. Okay, okay. so let's see. What is one of the best galleries that you've been to out here in New York City? For myself, uh, one of the best has been actually in the Bronx at El Fogon. It was curated by Julissa Rodriguez, one of the featured artists tonight actually. Uh, I didn't go to many galleries for a long time because I wasn't quite pleased with them. I know it sounds a little weird, but she really brought it back together, brought culture back to life and made everybody come together and enjoy it. So my homage to her as well. Okay. So, Ramon, for anyone that's interested, any of my viewers or anyone else that's watching, even though that's the same thing, um, if they wanted to enter into the competition or be included in any of your other events, how would they be able to do that? Very simple. Uh, either contacting me on all my Facebook threads or on Tumblr and whatnot, but best way is contact me via email, Productions at yahoo.com. That's R-A-M-O-N-T-R-I-F. Productions at Yahoo. Let everybody know what oh, they're watching. I should have known. In the building TV. Let's see what else is in the building. That's right. Let's go. Mr. Teardrop right here is one of my teammates. Miss Karina Bellini is a really talented playwright. So please give her a warm round of applause. Muy caliente. Muy caliente. That means really hot. <laughs> She means, I will never 
belong to you. When she says, up yours, what she really means is, I still love you. So I sit here in my tiny Washington Heights apartment, on the corner of 191st and Wadsworth, writing her a letter. <coughs> because I know it takes just as much passion to hate someone as it does to love someone. Because I know she will take that letter, open that letter, read that letter, and contemplate whether I still remember what she feels like. <laughs> This beautiful artwork is done by Lauraville, and we have him in the building. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? I'm doing fine. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, like I said, I've um, been writing since I was about 12, and writing on trains and streets, highways and stuff, and till about 17, 18 years old. And then I kind of stopped because I got caught up in the street. You know, in the 80s, there was a lot of money in the streets, so that caught a hold of me. But I got back into my work about two years ago. I started doing canvases and, and, and working my way into the galleries. Because, you know, I want, I want to set an example for the younger crowd. The way like the older guys did for me, I just want to do something for the younger guys. Now that I have three boys, my, I got a two-year-old, a three-year-old, my eight-year-old. So I just want to show them a way that they don't have to get in trouble in the street, that they could do it on paper and, and canvases and, and, and the world can still see it, you know? So I'm just doing it like that. If you could have your artwork anywhere, where would you have it at right now? Well, besides here, I, I, I would love to have, I keep it here because they gave me my start. But if I could get into the Smithsonian or, or like the Louvre in, in, in Europe, uh, that would be great. But I mean, I, I'm grateful wherever I'm at right now, you know, so it's all good. It's all so good. who are some um, artists that, is, that inspire you with your work? Well. When I was growing up, it was like writers like Wreck NSA, Deal, or, or, you know, just writers like that, like Lee, Lee, Lee Quinones, um, Blade, Duro, the old school dudes that used to do the whole cars, that that, that, that that inspired me a lot. But it was like a lot of the writers that didn't get credit for their work, like Pay Five, and they had these, their hand, their hand tags were so intriguing that, that that's what pulled me into graffiti, the hand tags. And then once I started exploring that, I got into the piecing and everything else that goes along with it, you know? Okay. So tell us a little bit about your artwork that's here tonight. Well, this is my abstract, because I try to stray away from the graffiti and try to just open up a wider, a wider aspect of my work. So there's more feeling. You know, I feel more comfortable when I do this besides the graffiti, you know? The graffiti is second nature to me, but this is just something new that I've been working with, and, and I feel good about it, you know? It's a lot of stencil work, a lot of, it's still with spray paint, or it's practically it's all spray paint, no, no erasing or nothing, it's all just all from the heart right here. You know? Spray paint and canvas, that's it? Yeah, yeah, yes, canvas. So tell us a little bit more about your painting that's over here. Well, this one, I use, I use spray paint in the background and then acrylic markers. There I did the sketch and then I took my time with it, drawing it out and you know, it, it takes more detail, you know, that, that, this will take me a couple of days to do. Whether I could just do this one like in a day, you know, because I, I, I can't stop in the middle of this. I got to finish it. This, I could put it down and come back to it. So how, do you, how does an artist go about selling his work when, when it's time when you've done it, you have your masterpiece and you want to sell it? How do you go about that? This is all new to me because like, this is like my, my third show. but. You know, hopefully my name gets out there. Like this time I put my Instagram and, and my email and stuff to hopefully, and on Facebook, I put it on and I, and I promote it on different pages of Facebook, like abstract art or promote your art. You know, and I'm just putting it out there and I just tell them if they're interested, inbox me and hopefully it's something to sell, you know? And I heard Little Man is a little artist as well, right? Yeah, yeah, he paints for me. When I paint the five points, he always paints for me. Hey, how you doing? Good. You gotta look into the camera. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm in the third grade. Okay. Um, What's your name? Christian. Where you from? 
Brazil and Ecuador. All right. So, what what exactly do you like to draw? Like, like that kind. Of Graffiti. Painting. Yeah. I I really not. I don't really know how to draw like that. So, do you have art class in school? No. Oh yeah yeah. So, what do you do in art class? We do like regular paintings. They they not they not on your level yet, right? No. So is there anybody that you want to give a shout out to at your school, your teachers, your classmates? Um, no, not really. No, no. All right, well, just let them know what they're watching. In the building TV. Let's see who else is in the building. Let's go. Mike, and right now we have him in the building. Hey, Mike, how's everything going? Doing quite well, thank you for asking. Tell us a little bit about you. Well, um, born and raised native of New York. Um, art is my passion. Uh, started off with traditional mediums. I graduated um, with Gold Seal from the Fine Artist as um, the High School of Art and Design. Um, after that, I had a small printmaking business with my late brother-in-law, Scott Merlino. Um, taking those new skills, of course, inspired me to do more um, design work. Um, so, of course, I've been making my living doing graphic design work, freelance work, um, and all around just having a good time, following the dream. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. All right. So if anyone's looking for you, how could they find you? I'm sorry? If anyone's looking for you, how can they find you? Oh, they can easily find me via my website, MikeBarello.com. Uh, that's Mike spelled with a Y. Um, I have no preference between Mike or Mikey, so that's why I spell it that way. Uh, also, to help me you know, differentiate the different mics in my homeroom class in high school, there was actually a couple of different mics in one homeroom class. So not only did it help me stand out, but it also gave me a cool little tag. Okay, so how did you get started in doing your artwork and tell us a little bit more about your artwork that's here tonight. Well, the artwork here tonight, although the subject matter is different, they all represent change in some shape or form, um, which of course is the theme of the show, um, to bring it in the fall season, to bring in change and new art. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, what was the first question again? <laughs> what inspired you to do the artwork that's here tonight? You know what, it just kind of just flowed like a river. Um, I've always been a dreamer. Um, at times people used to catch me daydreaming in school and was to think, oh, is there something wrong? Is something a matter? No, not particularly. I just, you know, the world just seemed more interesting inside of my head. So I decided to start sharing that with some of my classmates at school, started drawing. I guess I kind of just love being the center of attention, drawing cartoon characters like um, the Super Mario Brothers, Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, so it was very cartoony style at first. Um, then as I got older, I started getting more into horror, um, some of the dark art. It was very heavily inspired by Todd McFarlane. Farland, um, of course, other influences of Jack Kirby, Rembrandt, um, my mentor, Paul Cinelli, uh, Stan Ray, Wene Rinfield, um, and Mark Brown. These are some of the great New York City artists, which I've had the honor of being taught under. Um, so, so, this paperwork that's here tonight, it was just done with paint and the canvas? Actually, no, these are all digital. Um, so, a book pieces here uh, composed of photo elements, um, digital drawings, combination of both. Um, it's like this one here in the second from the top. That one's all uh, illustrated in Adobe Illustrator. It's all vector art. Um, of course, the story is uh, one that I came up with that kind of personifies and puts together all the stories I've heard from um, veterans of this past Iraqi war um, and how they felt about their position, what they were doing out there. So with your art, what is your goal? Would you like to be in comic books? Like, What is your goal as far as your art? There's no real goal, so to speak of. I just kind of just live it day by day and just see where it goes. Okay, where would you like it to go? Like it to go to the bank with a big stack of cash. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's really more about just doing something that you love because if you find something that you love to do and you do it for a living, you never work a day in your life. All right, if you had some information that you could pass on to an artist that would be helpful, what would it be? My advice would be 
don't concentrate so much on the future. Keep yourself here in the present. Uh, it's always been great to daydream, to conceptualize, but it's always very important to keep it grounded, keep it realistic. Sometimes you have to scrap an idea because it simply doesn't work, but bottom line, you just have to produce. And don't be so concerned what people think because there's gonna be an equal amount of people that love your work as well as the equal amount of people that are gonna hate your work. But if you keep producing, you're gonna get noticed and like-minded people will appreciate it and then you just build a fan base off of there. Take advantage of all free media. Um, of course, be friendly, be sociable. Never be afraid to speak yourself. You know, it's more than just being a visual artist speaking visually. You want to get out there and you want to talk to the people, bring it to them. You want to have people talking about it because it's one thing to have an advertisement. It's another thing to have people talking about it. People, I've always tell people in the field of graphic design, whenever I pick up a client, that the best buzz you can get is word of mouth because people will always trust their best friend and the word of their friends over any advertisement. I don't care how much money you pump into it, how well the design is, you gotta have people talking about it. Now that definitely was some great advice and you heard it here first. Let everybody know what they're watching. In the building TV. Let's see who else is in the building. Let's go. I have Victor in the building. Hey, tell us a little bit about you. How are you doing? Uh, my name is, of course, Victor Nunez. Uh, I have a clothing line by the name of Revs and Thieves. Um, I've had it established for about a year now. Uh, it's progressive streetwear. Uh, we do anything from tees, hoodies, sweatshirts, uh, varsity jackets we've done. Um, you know, anything and everything. We're, we're you know, up and coming. Um, and we've been doing really, really well in the, in the short time that we've been established, so I've been excited. Well, all right, so you're definitely going to send us a t-shirt with, with the In The Building TV logo, right? Of course, we, let's do it. Let's make it happen. I'm all down right. with that. Okay, so, so how did you get started? Uh, well, I got started originally. I, I've always had a, a love and passion for streetwear. Okay. Um, so that's kind of geared and... and um, helped steamroll the line itself. Um, I'm more business formal, business casual myself, um, but I try to have at least one or two pieces that kind of show something of that nature with me. Um, and just my love for overall fashion just kind of helped gear the line and gear creating the line. All of it kind of combined and helped me create Revs and Thieves from there. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Revs is French for dreams and um, Thieves just kind of, I'm Dominican and from the Bronx, so Thieves kind of represents that misconception that people have about people from the Bronx or, or youth in the Bronx or youth in general. So um, that's where my line kind of came from. So if you had some advice for anyone else that's out there trying to do the same thing you're doing, what kind of advice would you give them or what type of steps would you recommend for them to take to get started? I mean, I, I would definitely um, encourage brands to, you know, like, I'll use like baseball terms like it's better to go for the single than the home run um, it's it's real easy for people to try to start with big things like people fall in love with a lot of different pieces let's say like with like let's say a, a dress or uh, an expensive jacket or something they want to automatically create that but it takes time to get the funds and money to start that type of like gear right away with that so um, I would definitely say start small and work your way up to the higher echelon based products that you might be in love with um, and definitely you know be humble you know you, and and be able to hold up a conversation and, and meet different people because that's really what it all comes down to a, a lot of the things I've built like I started from an event where I only had 20 25 people come to now where I host events and like pop-up shops or what I call them and I'll have 200 plus people come out to these events 300 plus people so um, it's very humbling it's very exciting um, and if people want to get up to that level they really have to just network and start from the bottom up All right, so you got to take those steps and get out there and do it as well as isn't um Brandon really important in trademarking the name and what you want to do? I mean, it, it definitely is one of those intangibles that you have to just automatically, it has to be like second nature to just kind of go out and and definitely trademark, copyright, make sure all your, your pieces and everything are, are officially assigned to you. Um, but really just a matter of coming out with crisp clean designs things that really people can gravitate towards that's that's really the message to keep looking for you how can they find you i mean you can find me through my website revsandthieves.com that's r-e-v-e-s-a-n-d thieves t-h-i-e-v-e-s.com um you can find me at on instagram at revsandthievesclothing 
Um, pretty much if you go to the website, RevsandThieves.com, you can kind of find everything from there. Um, the site and Instagram are probably the most that I'm always on. I'm always on those two sites. Um, that's probably the best way to find me. And then, of course, Ramon is always pushing things from my collection. Um, so those will probably be the best ways to find me. All right. And we're definitely going to be waiting for our T-shirt. <clears throat> Send me up. Sweat up. Send me an email. And um, let everybody know what they're watching. In the building TV. Let's see who else is in the building. Let's go. I have Vita B in the building. Hey, what's going on, baby girl? Hi, Tiffany. How are you? I'm doing good. And yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. So what brings you out to this event tonight? Well, actually, I'm here hosting Shades of New for Ramon Triff Productions. And um, I'm really excited about this event because, as you see, we have all this amazing art up. We've had a great performance come through tonight. So I'm really excited to be here. And it's great to have In the Building TV here, too. You know? So tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Okay, so my name is Vita B, and I'm actually a spoken word artist. And I've been doing poetry for the last 10 years. I also opened up my own company, Verbal Acrobatics. You can check me out on Facebook slash Verbal Acrobatics. And we do all kinds of events, not just poetry, but we do theater, music, dance, all kinds. Or do you have like children right now? Do you do all ages? Um, we mostly deal with adult artists, not really children. Okay, so in the, in the field of doing poetry, like who are some of the people that you look up to? Um, I'm a big Willy Perdomo fan. I also love all the poets from New Yorkan, the ones that started New Yorkan. Um, I love Toni Morrison. She's been a big inspiration to me. And there's a lot of great contemporary poets out there right now, like Thomas Fucoloro, Jay Mace. So Simone Davis, a big shout out to all of them. All right, so if it's anyone that you go work with, who would you like to work with? Oh my God, Willie Perdomo, if you're out there, I'm Vita B, Verbal Acrobatics from the Bronx, baby. I'm repping the Latino community. Holla at me, please, I love you, you're the bomb. Do you have any up and coming events that we could look out for? Um, I will be hosting the event for Mr. Ramon Triff again in Dumbo, Brooklyn. And I'm working on setting up a collaboration event, but I'm looking for a venue. And once I do that, Verbal Acrobatics is in the building too, baby. <laughs> So, if you have some advice for other women or men who's out there and they want to get into poetry and they want to get their word out there, what kind of advice would you have for them? I would just tell them to like hustle hard, you know, go out there, network, hit up all kinds of events, even events that might not be related to poetry, and like get your name out there, you know, like have your business card, be ready to perform at a drop of a dime, like you gotta, you know, make an impression. Do, do you actually get paid to do it? It depends. Some events pay, some events don't. But you got to look at it like even the events that don't pay you, it's a great networking possibility. You never know who you can meet at an event that you're not being paid that will pay you to, to do their event. Let everybody know what they're watching. In the building TV, baby. Let's see who else is in the building. Let's go. Right now, I have We Live Radio in the building. What's going on? Good, 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 good. Tell us a little bit about you. My name is Terrence. I'm nobody by the name of Kid Exandre. I am a host of We Live Radio, also a music artist, and a entrepreneur of an upcoming clothing line named Silent But Deadly. Okay, and we also have... Jay from We Live Radio. You already know it's the VP, you know, the photographer of the company. Everything else is the same. All right, so y'all guys tell me a little bit more about your company so people can understand what y'all do. Sure. Uh, well, our company was built on trying to, you know, bring back the whole 90s radio, the classic radio where everybody would tune in, bump in, vibe with the whole, you know, everything that we had to, have, you know, come in. So we had everything from radio to to bring back topics, you know, to have people bring their family together and listen to the actual show itself. So it was something that we brought together to, to, to definitely help out. So. Okay. And how long have you been an artist and how long have you been, you know, doing your radio thing? Um, as for the We Live Radio, I started it last year, so it's only been a year so far since we started, but it's been like a great rise. We have 3,000 plus audience members from all around the world, so I mean, it's a real blessing from God. Um, as for my music career, I've been doing this since 
gosh, it's like since I was 11. But I mean, I started recording around the age of 15, you know, and still, still now as today. So. So, have you worked with a lot of different people as far as music-wise? As far as music-wise, I haven't really done any features. I was pretty more focused on myself to reach out to my own audience. That way, I couldn't really feed off too much to you know their their fans. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it's been working out pretty well though. All right. So if y'all guys had some advice for other jockeys that want to you know start their own radio show. What advice would y'all have for them? Man, keep your head up, stay focused, and always work hard. Have faith and consistency. You know, like is that, you gotta like really want it. If you really want it, anything is possible. So. And you? I would say stay creative, stay original, do your thing, and stay consistent with it. Because the best thing that everybody actually likes is for you to be original and just stay creative and be you. So. All right. So, do you have any events that they can look out for? Um, yes, we have one of um, one event coming up October 17. Okay. Um, it's called the Monster uh, Art Gallery Show. Yeah, it's gonna be at a Dumbo Loft and um, the Dumbo Lounge. We'll, we always post up, you know, updates and you know the details on the address and all that on Facebook. So you, know, you can check right. us out there. How about you? Yeah, same exactly. Yeah. So if anyone's looking for you guys and want to listen to your radio station, how can they find you? www.blogtalkradio.com slash we live radio that's we live radio as in w-e-e -E, live radio okay so let everybody know what they're watching in the building let's see who else in the building let's go so right now i'm in the building with rachel hey rachel how's everything good how are you some of you is a little bit about yourself my name is Rachel. I'm a New York City-based freelance makeup artist, and I enjoy working with photo shoots, brides, TV. I just had some work in the October issue of Glamour magazine, which was very exciting. Congratulations! Thank you for Breast Cancer Survivor. So that was an amazing experience, and here I am tonight at this art show, offering my makeover services. Okay, so how did you get into makeup? I was actually a chiropractor for 11 years. Wow. And I just wanted to follow my true passion. Okay. And about three years ago, I started taking some makeup classes just to have a creative outlet. Okay. And once I sat in the classroom, I said goodbye to backbones and hello to cheekbones. So as you can see, she's definitely a woman of many talents. So what, um, in your course of doing chiropractic and doing makeup, which one would you say that you actually like more? I think that they both tie together in a sense because they're both a form of healing. Right. You're making people feel beautiful. Right. You're making people feel healthy and their best. So I take with me the nurturing skills as a chiropractor and tie with the creative as a makeup artist, but I like makeup much better than paint management. <laughs> All right, so um, who are some makeup artists that inspire you in your course of doing makeup? I like Sam Fine. I like, you know, I worked at MAC Cosmetics for many years, and it wasn't necessarily a celebrity makeup artist, but just being around colleagues who taught me so many different things, whether it was brushes or products. Um, trying to think, I'll remember after the interview who, who's an inspiring one. But I liked um, Jennifer Lopez's makeup artist, Sam Fine. So do you have any up, up and coming events coming up that we can look out for? Um, not till hockey season. I do the sportscasters for the New York Rangers, and I do have some brides coming up, but I'll have to post pictures in order for you to see that. So if anybody wanted to find you to get their makeup done, how would they be able to do that? They could find me at www.beautifulfacesbyrachel.com. So is there anyone in particular that you would like to work with and do their makeup to get yourself out there? I would love to work for reality TV, the Bravo TV station, any of those housewives, New York, New Jersey, Atlanta. VH1, some type of reality TV show would be my ultimate goal. Okay, and since you've been doing it for so long and you went from doing chiropractic to now makeup, if you had advice for other makeup artists that's coming along and would like to do the business as well, what kind of advice or what kind of clues or tips would you give them to just start so that they wouldn't be, you know, far behind, they have a heads up? I would say first and foremost, follow your passion. If you're passionate about color, don't be afraid of color. I would start at a retail counter, like uh, Clinique, Chanel, Macy's, Bloomingdale's, and then you really get a, a knowledge of product, and you'll interact with customers all day who are going to sit in your chair and get those makeovers, and from then, they're going to come to you when they're getting married, and then it grows. Okay. 
So let everybody know what they're watching. We're watching In the Building TV. Let's see who else is in the building. Let's go. So today you got to see our art show, our first time covering this event. We had a great time. We met some amazing people. You got to meet some artists as well as their artwork. It went from work being done on canvases, spray paint, markers, digital, photo. We gave it to you all. And I even got to see a little Smurf in the building. So make sure you check us out. You know what you're watching, In The Building TV. And right now I'm off to my next event. Got to work, got to pay the bills. But let me get you in the building. Let's go. Stay tuned for the next episode. It's going down. In The Building TV.